Hi guys, welcome to CounterPoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Plague Song. This is to correct some lore and technical issues, and also to replace the one that Games Workshop took down. It is a pretty graphic, disturbing body horror episode that gives us some cool insights into chaos, and specifically the god of corruption, Nurgle, and so I invite you to come along for the ride. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures. They are a phenomenal paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama, who are waiting for your commission idea. You know darn well that you're just gonna spend another fortune on plastic gray kits that are just gonna sit there in your pile of shame, and it will take years to get them on the battlefield. Instead of procrastinating, let Mastermind Models and Miniatures bring your imagination to life. Go to the link down in the description below and tell them that we sent you. Do you not tire of failure, Morior? Know your place, Ephesus. Look at this. A day gone. This was a cradle of plague. A vibrant forest of decay. Spore towers reached to the choking clouds they themselves had birthed. Bubbling fauna wept into the diseased earth, and the scepter's call of plague winds whispered across the mulch rock of ravines. It was perfect, Morior. And... and now fire steals all else from view. Another failure. Another great garden burned by the puppets of a false god. Centuries of our labor undone in a matter of hours. Even you could not have foreseen this, sorcerer. But no matter, fires go out and we will return blight light to this world. Our legacy shall be eternal! <sighs> no. You have sown your last ill-fated crop. Since we left the Eye, you have led us to nothing but ash. You would take my place? I have seen your end, and it is now. Morior Dermatis. Once lord of the aching pox. I will kill you where you stand, traitor! With what power? <laughs> the Grandfather is finished with you. And yet his herald still stands with me! <laughs> How blind you are. <laughs> <laughs> Next. No, this cannot be! I have served! You have failed. Again. Like a weakling spore unable to find purchase in even the dankest of climes. No! I am not done! I have work yet to do! <laughs> Embrace your death. You are fortunate that you will only be cognizant enough to suffer the first one. And what of you three? 
Does your story end today, or shall you carry the wind of plague from this place? You will serve me as you served him? No, you misunderstand. This is not a question of choice. It is not a question at all. Those bodies are no longer yours to pledge. Let us see what our patron has to make of you. Which of you has the strength to pay your penance? The gods of Warhammer 40k fall in line with the pagan definition of gods. They are eternal forces outside of mortals who intercede on the material plane on their own behalf and the behalf of their supplicants. Nurgle in particular is a disgusting and off-putting patron as his gifts include despair, disease, rot, and decay. But along with this comes freedom from pain and immortality. Some followers even describe experiencing joy, bringing the grandfather's gifts to others, bringing new life out of the rot, decay, and death they spread. For eons, Nurgle was happy to play in his gardens nestled in the warp, corrupting wayward souls and taking the random planet in his name. But after the Great Rift, he set his eyes on the realm of Ultramar, the most stable and bountiful system in the Imperium. Here, he claimed the Scourge Stars, previously bountiful civilized and agricultural worlds, and launched his campaign south, taking hundreds of planets using the dueling warbands of Chaos Lord Typhus and Demon Primarch Mortarion. This was fought to a standstill by the resurrected Primarch Gilliman, and the forces of Nurgle retreated to the Scourge Stars to defend their holdings against an incursion from the Blood God Korn. It appears the Imperials are on the offensive, having burned a plague garden to the ground. Lord Moriel of the Aging Pox Warband is unapologetic for his efforts to Dark Apostle Ephesus, and he pays for that mistake. Nurgle's fickle Herald Nex changes to side with Ephesus before Lord Moriel is bombarded with warp energy. The gods of the warp can grant gifts of immortality, strength, new limbs, new horns, new visions, but the vessel to which the gift is granted has to be strong enough to incorporate it. When a vessel is too weak, it mutates, transforming into chaos spawn, gibbering malformed monsters cursed with incomprehensible forms and twisted minds. Death Shroud Terminators armed with Man Reaper size kneel not to Ephesus, but likely to the Herald Nex and the power he represents. This is because Death Shroud are the elite of the Plague Marines, serving as bodyguards to notable Chaos Lords, but they are also the eyes and ears of Demon Primarch Mortarion. It is therefore only with the absolute blessing of the Grandfather that Ephesus is able to kill two of them and elevate Septus to Harbinger, a champion of Nurgle. Ephesus and Septus board a corrupted Thunderhawk before setting off on their quest. They sail through the warp to an Imperial stronghold, with Ephesus being cryptic as to their mission and how they will prevail. What is the plan? <laughs> a plan precedes action. Our work is already done. You are as blunt to the Grandfather's teaching as Moria was. In the right storm, the seeds of the future can be blown to take root in the past. We are intercepting increased chatter amongst the Imperials, my lord. Multiple energy surges and targeting items. They are prepared to fire. Do you feel it yet, Seftus? The ill seeds of tomorrow swollen ripe. Weapons range achieved! Hold course. It is already too late.
never tire of this moment. Life birthed in entropy. adrift in the Immaterium. Time is neither constant nor linear. The past is not free of the future. That which will be done is possible exactly because it happens. <laughs> you are speaking in the riddles of demons. <laughs> How do you suggest I explain color to a blind man? But I will grant you one more gift. We stand in an astropathic relay. From here, astropaths cast their minds out through the warp, sending messages that are without time. Answers that may arrive before the question was ever asked. I am no neophyte or fool. How does that aid us? No neophyte, perhaps. <laughs> Come, we continue to the central chamber. We are close to the beginning now. Ephesus is a bit of a smart aleck and seems very casual about the dark miracles that sprawl out before him. The fleet disintegrates right as they get within range. The planet is corrupted before they even set foot on it. The few Imperial defenders are easy to overrun with plague marines and plague bearer demons. Of note, the resistance are Tempesta Scions, the elite of the Imperial Guard, outfitted with the best training weapons and equipment, but a mere cloud of pestilence is enough to rot their flesh and rot their corpses to the ground. Ephesus speaks to Septus and the riddles of demons, but the chief takeaways should be that Nurgle and Ephesus truly were the life born of death, and that in the right storm, because the warp is a timeless plane, the seeds of the future can be blown to the past. In order to harness this storm, though, Ephesus needs to gain access to the Astro Telepathic Choir, a collection of psychers meant to transmit, receive, and relay messages across Imperial held space and who are currently protected by Titan proof blast doors. The Harbinger is sacrificed to rot and open the door, and while a loyal servant, he is reacquainted with the pain and despair in his death throes. Do you see, Moriel? Do you see yet the great plan Grandfather laid out for me? Look. Witness the truth that you were too blunt to see. Kill me! And deprive you of your redemption? No. The lesson is not over. Every plague of the body dies with the host. Spores, so perfectly birthed, are naught but frail embers without sufficient life to infect. Such desperate genesis. All of the material comes to naught. But the mind, the soul, a pathogen so virulent, it bred the raw stuff of the Immaterium. Shall I tell you of the Song of Seven? Shall I sing its withering refrain? You are the raw will of the Grandfather, an ever-shifting wretch of pain and madness, through you will birth a disease with no beginning and no end. A plague of mind madness like the galaxy has never seen!
and hear your lament. In our final sequence, we get the lesson the Grandfather wishes to impart. His followers cannot be haphazard with his gifts, merely throwing rot and decay randomly and expect Nurgle's realm to grow. They have to be intentional and give enough life, entropy, and death in order to spread his gifts. Ephesus admires and sanctifies that process by calling it Desperate Genesis. The remnants of Moriel's consciousness and his corrupted body are combined with the astro-telepathic choir, creating the Song of the Seven, a psychic wind of plague that reaches into the past to destroy the fleet, reaches into the path to corrupt the world, and paves the way for its own creation. This episode should make you feel uncomfortable, it should make you feel disgusted, and it should either make you want to join Grandfather Durgle, or it should make you want to send in the Grey Knights for some holy purging. Now, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell, and comment down below for the comment gods. All of that is free, it helps me in the algorithm, and helps other people find my content. If you like what I do and want to see more of it, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash counterpoints, but it's also linked below. We also have an Indiegogo for the science fiction weapons project we're doing, so if you want to see more stuff blow up, throw me a couple of dollars there. If you want to hang out with other nerds and talk about Warhammer, science fiction, politics, philosophy, model painting, kit bashing, or terrain building, then join our Discord and you'll find like-minded people. Also free, by the way. If you like the political debate or essays, then check out my channel's link down in the description. If you need a wallet, check out Hawkins & Company. If you need third-party bits, check out Libra Demonica. If you need your models painted, check out Mastermind Models and Miniatures. If you need body and face wash, use Geology. If you need a healthy breakfast cereal, get some Magic Spoon. If you need a gaming chair, go to Ewan Racing. And if you need a standing desk, use Flexi Spot. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Until the end.